What's up, guys? Pittsburgh Weishwartz back again. Hollow Live continues. Generation 2. We're going to get right into it. Andy, kick us off. Favorite card profile. All right, cool. We got um, uh, Choco. Her. Uh, brainstorm, Choco. If you have two or more other Hollow Live characters, your other Ayami, Nakiri, Ayami's one year, and Subaru, Ozaru, full of energy, get 1,000 power. A lot of words. Uh, flip over the top five cards of your deck. Uh, it's a brainstorm for five to draw a card. Wow, card looks familiar. Yep, they're in every single one. Yep. Uh, first effect works with both your level one and level three combo that are both included in your trial deck. Must be must be nice. Yep. Uh, card is worse than the other TD draw brainstorms because this level one combo doesn't need a reverse. I don't think this. Super well, no, 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 no. It just it's, it just gets big. I think. It's well, not that it doesn't need a reverse. You know, get power. The the it's IMA big. the IMA sits really big. She's she would sit sixty five with one of these in the back row. Oh, Seventy five okay. if you had two. So like, and then she's a I believe it's a Magro combo. We'll get to her real really? soon. Mm -hmm. But like an on attack combo that you could possibly back up and then live and then go for an on attack combo again, um, pretty decent. But like you know, if you're trying to make that card work in some way. You slot like one of these in, one or two of these in is like a tech, right? Just as like a an apples pump, the one K global. I guess I guess that's fair. Yeah, I didn't realize it sat at fifty five cross turn. Yeah, the IMA is actually one of the better combos, but we'll talk about that soon, I guess. Hmm. All right, next. Pretty simple. All right, have another Chaco. Uh, zero zero fifteen hundred. Uh, character across from it can't move. It's an anti runner. When this card attacks, choose any of your Hollow Life characters, including this card, uh, and that character gains fifteen hundred power for the end uh, until the end of the turn. So it's an anti runner that can swing at three k. It can pick off weaker runners, which are most of them, aside sure. from the, yeah. the, the center, center runners, generally set at thirty five. There are two other better anti runners in Hollow Life. This, oh, is, like this a, is the worst. It's like one. a Shimakai staple to it. That's like not bad. Yeah, it does just give fifteen hundred power whenever at any point. So in the they game. have what do they have? They have um Yoshiko anti runner, like word for word. And then they have another oversized anti runner. Like cross turn oversized anti runner. But I think this is just like strictly worse. I don't than... know about strictly. I mean it it does a different thing, right? This is a it has like a pump. Yeah, it is. Pump. It's two tech effects on one card. Yeah, I guess it is like a pump. If you need like, if you have like a reverse combo, it'd be okay, I guess. But I mean, granted, there's probably a better option. I mean, I think we've looked at some already that like are pretty good that also have pump power. But yeah, it feels like multiple rolls, so I like it. Ubuki Cheery pumps for the same amount of power. Mm -hmm. All right, next. I am a. Oh, this is just a vanilla backup. Never mind. Vanilla. Next card. Uh, I am a combo. One zero forty five hundred. I am a. If you have two or more other Hall Life characters, gains a thousand power when this attacks. If you have the door in your climax zone, which is this I am a cute little I am a down here. Uh, look at up to four cards on the top of your deck. Choose one level one or higher card from among them. Add it to your hand. Put the rest in the waiting room. So there's a fifty five hundred cross turn level one or higher Maguro off of door. That's a lot of good words jammed together in the same mm -hmm. long run on sentence. Um, I honestly think this combo is actually pretty fucking good. Uh, it's at sixty five with the uh, brainstorm. With the brainstorm, yeah. Them. Like it's it's got a lot of good things going for it. It can add events. There are events that you may want to play in Hall Alive, depending on what you want to do. I think you could do a lot worse than this combo. I think that it it's it's kind of like quietly sitting there. It'll maybe make its way into some deck. Uh, we've started to see some Hall Alive decks come out of Japan. Um, this, unfortunately, hasn't been in a lot of them, uh, if any of them at all, but it is a solid combo, and it does have synergy with all the events in Hall Alive. It's on a good trigger. Yeah, no, there's there's definitely a deck in Hall Alive somewhere that plays this. There just happen to be way too many cards to make uh, the number of competent decks I feel like you could make with the card pool just yet. So there there will be something that plays this at some point. Yeah, I think the combo is actually like perfectly playable, good combo. I, I agree. I got a question here for uh, before I rate it. A question for Tanner and Carmen here who played a played around with the set a bit. Mm -hmm. Um, 
How good are the uh, utility level ones in Hollow Live? Because I see a combo like this where it's only uh, Mogarrowing for, you know, top checking for uh, level one cards. So well, you do have to go for another level one turn. Um, it'd be nice to have some auxiliary uh, level one, like one zero targets to be able to slam back down. It, it, I guess I'm saying I feel like you'd probably run a little bit lower on level zeros. And did a we bit talk about the Subaru already? What generation is Subaru? Is she generation two? Uh, Gen two, yeah, we'll see. Oh, the, uh, so we'll talk about that card soon. That, yeah. uh, spoiler alert, uh, Hollow Life has Azusa. So, um... Just on, oh, yeah, at just level on, one? On, yes. On play a copy effect at level one, yep. Yes. All right. So, um, that is a card this card could add. Also, all the events. Um, right. If you're playing the gamers package, you could add the gamers event, right? That's the big one. I think, the right, camera. Tanner? The camera, yeah. Yeah, the camera. The camera um, Probably run some uh, one zero backups also. Yeah, something like that. There's a leaf This sits kind of beefy, Rings so you could actually backup. like realistically back it up, grab a backup. and Yeah, it would be 65 back up to 85. Pretty nice power line. Then go for uh, on attack mills again. Be nice. Yeah, I think it's just like a super solid combo. It's, it's not like a remarkable combo, but it's like a very solid combo that does everything you pretty much want to do in this set, mm -hmm. I think. You just gotta build around it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I, I would like I would like would not be surprised to see this being run in like any deck to be honest. Yeah, like if definitely it, not. The, the weird thing is that it's red, right? Like red is like <laughs> it's red is like the hardest color in Hollow Live to play. Like that's not saying a lot a lot, because there are still good red cards and you can like make small splashes. It's hard to play red as like a primary level one color. Um, unless you're playing, like, standby, I guess, because, like, the other red cards don't really synergize with this outside of the Ramorous, which we won't get to until forever. It's like a Polka, it's like a Gen 5 card. But there is, like, just, you know, Ramorous card, like, word for word in this set. So you could play this with Ramorous, which would be pretty nice. So you would have Ramorous in your deck. Maybe you'd have Azusa in your deck as well, although that would kind of create some problems. When we talk about the Azusa, the Azusa has an experience condition. Uh, but you have ways to, you know, manage that. Yeah. All right, we What's can move the, uh, on. Oh, I, I wanted to know the lore on this card, like the art. Uh, Tanner, does the ghost have a name? The little ghost that's like spooked in the background. That's that's not a question for me. We've already uh, exhausted my area of expertise here. Oh, oh you're not an Ayame. Uh, not an Ayame All I know about Ayame is that she has the Doki Doki video, um, and she's really fucking cute. She just goes, yo, da yo. Yeah, yo, yo da zo. She's got a funny voice. I like her. Yeah, I'm a big fan of IMA. I don't watch any of her streams. She's just really cute. She is, she is cute, though, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Speaking of IMA being cute, next card. Inner. All right. Uh, 2 1 IMA. It's a 2500 power. It is a level assist, and you can rest it, draw a card, ditch a card. I yep. like it. I love it's, that effect on a level assist. It's the slime support, except it's a level assist instead of a two K. That's fine. If you if you need it, you need it. Draw ditch is a is a cool effect. Yeah, effect's good. It, it depends on the deck. I think there are lots of supports that you could play in the set. So like you know, you have to uh, you have to have a reason to be playing this one, but it's still mm -hmm. it's still good. It does synergize with the act support stuff in Gen One, if you. Yeah, it does. To, it does. It does. It does do that. It is a free act. All right, moving on. Back to Andy. Ooh, we got the very sexy Chaco. Uh, when this is placed on hand, from state to stage, you can uh, heal, and uh, on attack, you can discard two to burn your opponent one. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Yep. It, it's Jibril. Yeah, it's fine. Fine off finisher. Yeah, it is Jibril. Yeah, it's just a totally fine off finisher effect. It, it's it's good that there are... So, we're going to talk about it, I guess, in the next video. But, like, things with on attack, like, abilities, um, with the way Hall Alive is being built out, are kind of at a premium. And I've seen this pop up as a card that gets summoned off the Gen 3 Rushia. Just as something that could burn mm. uh, for like a low stock cost because the Rushia can like summon like arbitrary cards from your grave. Um, it, it, and then it's also it, a healer. 
So yeah, if your if your finisher combo isn't too heavy on hand, um, I actually a little really bit like extra this. push. It, it, like, because a lot of off finishers you don't get a heal off of. You get like a a burn effect and that's it, right? Like look a at burn that or like Musashi. a bounce or like a Musashi is an inherent effect. Yeah, so you don't get no, a heal. This is like a potentially like two points of damage swing. You know, like you heal yourself, you deal one to them. So. Mm -hmm. Those are both really good effects. I like it a lot. Yep. I think it's just a totally playable card, yeah. Yeah, seems, seems pretty decent. Heal or raw finisher. All right. Uh, red card. Ryan? All right. The Gen 2 event. Uh, if you have Choco Yuzuki, Spy of the Neighboring Country, and Ayame Nakiri, Fams, choose up to one Azura Subaru full of energy in your hand and put it on any slot of your stage. That's the... Uh, the Subaru level 3 from the trial deck. Uh, and it gains the following two abilities until the end of your opponent's next turn. During battles involving this card, your opponent can't play backups or events from their hand. And it also becomes hacksproof. This card should be pretty familiar. This is the Maiden event from Rent a Girlfriend. Except it has a condition on it. Um, for some reason. And it summons an infinitely worse card <laughs> than, than the... Uh... What's her name? Fucking Paksumi. It summons an infinitely worse card than the Sumi, but it is the same profile, basically. But you also have to meet this field condition. I mean, the field condition's not too big of a stretch, though. The fact that it's the Brainstormer that you're going to play, and it's a level assist. So it's not, like, bad cards to have on field, or cards that are unlikely that you'll be, like, wanting on field, but still... For the finisher, it's okay. it, it it's just that Subaru is a bad card, unfortunately. Spoiler right. alert. It it's really unfortunate. Like, I think all of these like early play level threes with these like weird conditions have seen play except for Subaru. It's it's hard it's hard life being a duck, I guess. <laughs> well, I mean, <clears throat> looking at the Ronald girlfriend card though too, right? Like, touching upon what Tanner said a little bit here. Like yeah, the brainstorm and the level assist are like fine cards. Like you, you're not upset to have those on your field. They're good cards, but they're not really like premium. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, the exactly. The stuff in Rental Girlfriend that made that combo really work was like you had like a really premium back row assist and like a really good card that it was supporting in the front. Yeah. Not just a bunch of average cards. They were like all above average, right? Yeah. Exactly. But it does let you early play the Subaru, and the Subaru is a combo. But like you know, it's kind of what, what does the Subaru combo do? Um, it is on play search, and remember this card does summon from your hand, so you do get the search. And then it is a on climax placement salvage, and then this card gets power until the end of your opponent's next turn. Equal to your other Hall Alive characters. So it's like a 14k. And it searches a card from deck and then salvages a card. So it's like a... That's not bad at all. a plus one. Wait, I thought you said... It, it's I thought you said... On play, salvages on it on just play. doesn't do anything. It doesn't it was put... tough being a duck. That's a fine combo. Except you paid a stock to do it. You paid a stock and a hand to do it. It was a stock and two hand, right? This is the same... It's the, so these events are the same card economy as an early play heal. So for the same card economy as an early play heal, you played the Subaru and then got two cards back. So the card went even. The combo the went even at the end of the day. Though. No, but still, it still goes even. The whole thing goes even because you have to play this event. Then the Subaru comes from hand. So, and then the Subaru well, it's hand still trips. It's basically like you just played an early play from your hand then. And then no, you get the no, climax no. It, combo it, to plus with. It's slightly better. Because you play the climax combo and then uh, the coal card package goes even. The problem is it doesn't do anything else. It just... Uh, like, I'm getting some like... Uh, I'm getting some major like Kizniver vibes here. A little For bit. all you uh, alpha gamers out there who have... Uh, been around the Weiss Schwartz block for a bit. You kind of have like this early play level three combo that it's not like your primary killing combo or anything, but um, 
you early play it down, and then you have like another little plusing effect off it as well. You'd be playing and then three you climaxes to a real then. Three combo. Excel World's the same way. Maybe I don't know. I wouldn't want to be playing three climaxes if I didn't have to. Uh, I'm I'm not a big fan of the Subaru like package. I don't think that card does enough at all. I don't think you can be like investing all this sculpting, especially when you have to sculpt also for an event. You have to have this event, you have to have this Subaru, and then you do get like a selective plus from both deck and grave, but then all the card does after the fact is be big for one turn cycle. I mean, I that wins know. board though, like 14k is pretty beefy. And then you have the level assist behind it too. So yeah, it's going to be a 15-5, yeah. The, the issue is that like the Rusia, which is far less hard to do, also puts a 15-5 body across turn on board. So like there's no real reason to play the Subaru because the Rusia hits the same power level, has hand on core, and can summon healers. So like she Off just gets trigger too. She, yeah, she like just gets outclassed by like the other packages from the other trial decks. But like I get we can talk about that when we get to Subaru, I guess. The, the the event is actually good. Like the event the event is a good profile. Because you're like for this card economy putting a level three on board, which is good. It's just that the level three combo itself is like kinda bad. Um but yeah, we can move on here. Alright, so we have the Shion. Uh when your other Hall of character is frontal attacked, you can sack this. If you do choose one of your characters in battle, it gets one K, so it's a field backup. One K, and then there's a double bond. You can choose to bond to one of these cards, not both of them. Uh discard a card and you either bond to the Aqua Vanilla or the Subaru uh level three. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. This, this is actually pretty fucking bad. I mean, this the, the is Subaru like, combo doesn't seem great, and Vanilla obviously isn't, uh, isn't great. <laughs> this is like the so, worst bonder of the bunch. Yeah. This is like not good at all. This is really bad. This might be an F, actually. Well, I, I think the the not point the, the the point of it is you grab your Subaru so that you can early play it with the event, and then this card's also on your field to be a field backup for your. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I understand the idea. I just think it's bad. It's not very good, no. The field backup, your vanilla. The field backup that bonds is fine. It's just like also being tethered to this garbage the fact, vanilla cards. Kind the, fact of... that the, the fact that the bond targets are questionable, I think, is the. If it bonded to better cards, the card would be sick. Yeah. All right. Next card, Tanner. All right, Aqua. During your main phase, when this is placed in hand of stage, you look at the top card of your library and put it on the top or bottom. If you have one or less cards in your clock, choose one of your Hall of Life characters and stand them. When this is placed from the hand to the stage, also reveal the top card. If it's a character put in your hand, discard a card from your hand. So it is on play. You you reveal top. You can either add it to hand. And then you can go and scry. And the other part of that first effect is basically help stand the uh, uh, the Shion Brainstormer if you miss that condition. Because that would directly counter it. So It also just lets you brainstorm twice if you're at low clock. Mm. If you could reuse your draw ditch also. You could, a lot re of you could well. reuse any card you have to tap. Um, and it's also, like, a scry and console on the same card, which is already, like, pretty good. Um, you reuse your 2-1 level assist so you can draw ditch twice. This, That's this, what I just said. Yeah. Oh, did you say that? <laughs> yeah. I wasn't listening. This my is, idea. This card has actually been a massive overperformer uh, in every list I've played it in, actually. So I was playing it with the Shion Brainstormer, the card that can't stand. We'll get to that soon. Um, if you like are at a specific <laughs> clock state, and then also in the decks where you're playing the like draw brainstormers, sometimes you have effects where you have to like rest the draw brainstorm to like a villa condition. Uh, whether that's like summoning the Rushia or summoning another character, you have to like tap down a level X and a specific brainstorm. 
Uh, so it lets you brainstorm on the same turn that you do that, at the very minimum, as well as, like, whenever you, like, level at X0 or whatever, and you, you're at 1-1, one, one, you can, like, brainstorm twice in a turn. And that's a lot of deck speed. That's 10 cards. God forbid you hit and draw anything. That's a lot of cards you're moving. Mm -hmm. As well as this card, quote-unquote, moving two cards. You, like, scry one that's not really moving a card, and then you console. Uh, Hollow Lives also kind of hard up for costless ditch outs, so that fulfills that slot as well. Okay. Like I said, so the, ca the card is an overperformer. Like, I don't think it's, like, super, super amazing, but it has been performing above what I would think of it. So the condition, the Sheon Brainstorm doesn't stand if you have one or less cards in clock. Correct. Okay. So this can, it doesn't this can stand, stand if you if have it, X zero. It's, okay. it's about like it only it doesn't with... stand if you're at X zero. It stands at X one. Oh, does it? Yes. Okay. If you have one or less cards in clock, no, it doesn't stand at one one. Yeah, I was gonna say it has. Okay. It's two. I just okay. sneeze. Sorry, that's why I wasn't talking. <laughs> but, but, I, yeah, um. But... The console effect on its own seems seems pretty solid. The fact that this can work in tandem with the fail case on the Xi'an Brainstorm, for the five card Brainstorm, I think makes it uh makes it sol solidly playable. I'd say. Yeah, but before the sneeze, what I was trying to say was uh, I think um I think there's maybe some real potential here when you combine it not with not necessarily just with the Gen two stuff, but when you look at the other generations. And can start untapping cards that maybe you're not supposed to be untapping. You know what I mean? Maybe get some broken interaction. I think being able to brainstorm twice in a turn is already broken enough, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The the only other case that I can think of off the top of my head is to get more get more acts for the act support packages in. Uh... In Gen 1, but most of those effects only go off one time per turn anyway. Unless you want to use your Matsuri Brainstorm to give power, and then again to Brainstorm. It's also a Scry and Console on the same card. Like a pretty good filtering card in its own right. Yeah. I think I think it's like a B, actually. Like, I don't know, maybe I'm biased from playing with it, because I've been playing lists that like directly benefit from it a lot, but I, I, I can't stress enough that it is an overperforming card so far. Well, you're saying like multiple lists, plural. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it sounds yeah. like a lot will benefit from this card. The um, anything that has to tap down these trial deck brainstorm benefits from the card, and then anything that plays Shion probably has to play like at least one copy of the card as an out. Because there is a thing with the Shion where if you just play four Shion brainstorms, I guess we can talk about that when we get to the Shion. You can just play another Shion. That's like an out to the card not standing, right? Just right. playing another copy. So like, you don't have to introduce another card that you know you might not be able to get. Fair enough. But the card is an overperformer. It is a good card. All right, we can move on. Blow through the trial deck here. Uh, back to Andy. <clears throat> we got the Subaru running late. Uh, all your other Hall Life characters get five hundo. Uh, you can pay one sack this. Choose a uh, the event card in your waiting room and uh, add it back to your hand. Um, why do you have to like pay one and sack this? Why can't you just like sack it and get the event? Yeah. I I, I don't I don't maybe that's not how the power budgeting would work. Maybe I'm just getting uh, a little starstruck by a. Uh, Eight standby slime doing that with their brainstormer, just being able to like sacrifice it and then top check. Yeah. At the end of the game. Mm -hmm. Seems a little under spec, but it is a way to get your event, I guess. It's a way to bond your event. So that wouldn't be overpowered, right? If it was were free. I, no, I, I don't think so. I think it would. Yeah. It wouldn't be able to be a global five. It would have to be something else, like a frontal five, maybe just a regular assist. I, I don't know. Yeah, as it stands, the card's not very good. Not not fantastic. All right. All right, we've got this Aqua. Level 0, 2k power. If there is a marker under this card, it gains a level and 1500 power. On play, reveal top card of your deck. If it's a hollow live trait character, put it face down under this as a marker. It is a Futaba. Futaba pretty good. Yep. It's a, um, it's, it's, 
Solid profile. Falling off these days, I think. I don't. I don't know if thirty-five does enough these days. Yeah, I, I feel yeah. like four K. Four K is better these days at level it's like, zero. Yeah, it's like you're either a four K or you're a runner. Like you're if a four K or you do something else, right? Yeah. If if the meta leans back toward like uh, toward bombs at level zero, <laughs> lots of bombs, then the extra level from the Futaba is better. Otherwise, I think I feel like you'd rather a four K Futaba or even just a vanilla four yeah. K. Yeah, yeah, I don't think the thirty-five hundred is the problem. I just think the level doesn't do anything. Right right well, there is the forty. There is the Toa in Gen Four that is the exact same thing, but instead of gaining the level, it goes to four K. Okay, there is Futaba. there is a four K Futaba in this right. then. Yeah, probably run that one instead. Oh, if, you, if you need the level, this fine. one's here. So yeah, it is unsightable. If it has a level, Futabas are good. But notably, we say this every time, but just if you're like new to Weiss and you're just into Hall Alive, and that's why you're looking into the game. Uh, these profiles we call them Futaba because of Persona Five. Uh, there was that was the first version of this card. The exact same text, word for word. Uh, the big thing with Futabas is you don't have to marker the card. So this card is like a good beater at level zero, and like throughout the game, it like gives you five card brainstorms. Uh, it lets you like just you know compress a card randomly. Uh, it moves one card. It has more utility outside of just being a beater, uh, which is why it's like more of a premium for a, like level zero card uh that you would just use to attack with as opposed to you know any other level zero card they would use to attack with it scales better than other oversizes sorry i had to throw my you know two cents in for the uh for the new people mm -hmm. all right moving on we got this she on this is really nice art actually uh the beginning of your opponent's attack phase you can pay one if you do Choose the character opposite this and another character in your opponent's front row. Stand and swap them. Wow. Stand and swap. That is horrific. Yeah, I, I, I hate That's it. That's really bad. <laughs> it's, really, it's really funny, but it's... Yeah, I not. don't think it's good. Yeah, it is funny. You're right. It is really funny, but I don't think it's very good card. You, I mean, see, it maybe be like a pseudo yeah. plusing level zero in a sense, right? That's the idea, like right? In front of it. That is the intention, but I don't think it will work out that way. I think they hypothetically only can field two of their on reverse combos. You can deny one of them with this. Really bad. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it, would, it would be better if this card were a 5,000 power level one and you could stand and swap their. Any level thing. Zero in front of it or the something. fact that you can't stand and swap any card, you have to stand and swap front row. With the card across from this only. I think yeah. this is actually an F. I think this is actually unplayable. I, I, I can't. It's, it's, it's not, so not bad, dude. Okay, you wouldn't run the cards that run your opponent's card, right? Like the runners that run your opponent's character. And this is yeah. like a worse version of those cards that's costed. The run your opponent's character cards are 2k power base, I believe. This is 25. Yes. Card sick. Yeah. <clears throat> Yes. This can work from the back row too, for what it's worth. No, it can't. The character across from this. So choose. Oh. You can only choose the character across from this. Too oh. bad you can't. Too bad the character across from a character in you the back. You can still pay the cost. The character in the other back you could slot. still pay the cost. You can pay. Wait, one. wait, wait. Oh, wait, hold on. The um. The uh the Toka level one combo in Data Live. Yes, but that's a that combo. That fires from the back row. Yes, that's a combo where it has to have a character across from it reversed or non-existent. That card works because there is no existent character. Because there is no mm. character. And for that same reason, there's no character for this card to choose. Exactly. Yeah, not very good. Unfortunate. It has really good art. but mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's the SP. Have is it really? That. Is this I... the SP? So yeah. all, the, all the fancy well, arts in the TDs. If you like Xion and you're just collecting, the art is really good. So, But the, the card itself is pretty bad. So good for you if you like Xion and you just want to collect the cards, the card will be cheap. It'll be right? cheap, yep. Yeah. So. As cheap as a TDSP can be. Yeah. The TDSPs are always at a premium. All right. Tanner, go ahead. All right. Uh, one zero. Shuba, uh, she's 3,500 power on turn. She goes up to 75. Next robot. It's the same card as the yeah. slime robot. 
Sap's got, Sap's got Ramorous, too. You can just play Slime. Yeah, it's, it's literally the same thing. The colors are a little wonky. Be like red, blue, probably yellow. It's a little weird. Um, Wait, does Hollow does Hol Life have a, uh, Ram a Ramorous? Yeah. yeah, they do. We'll, we'll talk about word. it way, way later in Gen 5. Yeah, word for word, same card. So, Because Ramorous is in the set, this card is playable, but it's still not a good card. It's, yeah, on, it's, right it's only good because it deletes itself from your deck after you challenge a 1-1 one, one with Climax yeah. down, yeah. Because mm -hmm. with the Climax down, this card's 8-5. You, like, swing over a 1-1, one, one, and then this card pieces off to memory, and you never see it again. Yeah, I guess C is more appropriate. I think Brian's right, probably. All right. Uh, Aqua Vanilla. You can get this card SR um, next. Uh, back to Andy. Ooh, we got the Smug Girl. Uh, each of your other Hall Live characters. Uh, pump her a thousand power, so she's a two one ten five. Sick of these cards. Yeah, I kind of sick of seeing them. This, this one's an F. I don't like it. Yeah. And sick of sick of seeing them. Sick of them existing. Do not like. Do literally anything else with this slot than these cards. They're in every TD. I don't know why they print them. So. All right. New, new, new players like big numbers. They do like big numbers, yeah. But yeah, okay, all right. Uh, Trial deck Subaru combo, level 3, 10k power. Uh, when this card is placed on the stage from your hand, you may search your deck for a Hollow Life trait character, reveal it, add it to your hand, and shuffle your deck. Then when, to you, Sunflower, the pants, is placed in your climax zone, if this is in your front row, Choose up to one Hollow Life character in your waiting room, return it to your hand, and this card gains X power until the end of your opponent's next turn. X is t uh, 1,000 power times the number of your other Hollow Life characters. So it gets an additional 4K, and you salvage when you play the climax. It what is, a finisher! It is probably 15-5 cross turn, 16-5 with climax down. Um, it, it kills stuff, but it doesn't really kill your opponent. You are refilling your hand. This lets you play into the Hotchima tap counter. The problem being that the Rushia that does a very similar thing to this card plays into the Hotchima counter better and has like a decompression effect on it. Like, I, it's, it's so unfortunate. This card could have done so many other things and instead it does nothing and is outclassed by cards that are so similar to it. Yeah. Even in the same color on the same trigger. It's such an unfortunate card. It is cu a cute card. Like, I like the yeah, art. They, yeah, they, yeah, I like the art a lot. It, it's unfortunate that this card just really doesn't do anything. But yeah, I'm not a big fan. I think you... Uh, I, I, I think, okay, Andy, before like you... Like I mentioned before, you Before can you say combos. that you can play it... Okay, no, no, no. Before you say that you can play this as some sort of, like, off, like, climax combo... You have to understand, Andy, this is like a 16 to 20 card package that you have to shove into your deck. You can't play this as like a tertiary strategy. This is a core strategy of your deck if you choose to include it. The card minimum... Oh, yeah, you, like, you, do, okay, yeah. Yeah, you do have to run like yeah. a Brainstormer and the, the assist and all that shit. Too. Yeah, the, like the, the, the card, like uh -huh. the amount of slots you have to commit to play it is just too high. Because, like, otherwise I'd agreed with you. I think it would be a, like, good bridge, right? Like, is that what you're trying to get at? Like, it's a bridge card? Yeah, or if you have something else that you can do at level 1 where you, like, don't need a combo necessarily. Kind of mm -hmm. like Excel World does. Where you have, like, a way to plus and, like, maintain advantage without a climax combo. Yeah, I, I think it's just You don't have to run all cards. these, like, other cards, yeah. It's just too much that you have to put in your deck to even have this card be online. Um, really unfortunate for Subaru. Oh, well. Moving on. We got this Aqua. We're getting in the booster now. Double rare. Double rare. On play, you may heal. On attack, if you have the pants, gaming on a day off, uh, which is the pants here, uh, is in your climax zone. Two or more other Hollow Life characters. Choose one of the following two effects and perform it. Your opponent rep returns the top ten cards of their stock to their deck, doubles their deck, puts the same number of cards that return from their deck to the top of uh, their stock, so off the top of their deck, you put up to 10 cards from their stock, stock swap from deck, and then you can choose to also discard 2. Uh, if you discard 2, burn 3. 
and then you look at the top two cards of your deck and uh, rearrange them. You know, I've played this card, and I've actually never done the top two rearrange ever. I've always forgot, actually. I've played this combo actually a significant amount, and I've never remembered to top two rearrange my own deck. It's, like, never come up, actually. I guess it does inform your next attack. If you choose to do that, but you only get one of the two. You either do this like stock swap to deck, uh, or you get a burn. <coughs> this is like a scuffed version of the Roxy from Ushoku. Mm. It's just so, worse. So ha having played with this, how does the stock swap effect feel, or do you? Oh, it do doesn't it do parent? anything. Uh, okay. So okay, so here's the good thing about it, right? So I don't want to be like super negative about it, like completely. Um, it's always possibly positive. You're, like, it does decompress your opponent some amount, right, if their stock is clean. If you assume an, a quote-unquote normal game of Weiss where it's where you and your opponent are both trying to have the cleanest amount of stock and compress as much as possible, um, it is nothing but a possible upside for free. It could be debilitating, depending on certain deck states. But the fact that it is a stock swap to deck means that it it's not as impactful or as blowout as a normal stock swap. So it's not as worse okay. as you might initially think, but it is only a possible upside. There's never a real downside, I guess. Unless your opponent already has climax in their stock that you Maybe it's about. not that bad though, right? Cause, cause yeah, it's, it's, free it's not terrible. Like... It is free, yeah. Like there's Definitely times where it could be useful. Let's say your opponent has one card in deck and you know it's a climax, right? Yeah, you can, you, you can, know. like, probably strand it out and, like, you have pretty good odds of, like, stranding them a climax then. Mm -hmm. um, it's definitely not I the guess worst. also, like, if you're, it's kind of like a Hail Mary, too, right? Like, if you're, if you're really in a shit spot and you need to just sack the shit out of your opponent, you can just, like, cross your fingers and re-roll their stock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like it's like not the worst for for a free version, but like most of the but time like you're I guess if you be... look at it as like if you look at it as the the primary effect of it is the second one, right? And the yeah. top effect as a bonus, it reads a lot better than I think. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. You're going to be burning three most of the time with this. Gotcha. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um that, good. that being said, this top end is really underwhelming. Uh, when you play this, you're playing it because of the trigger. There is, like, a support in this generation that we'll get to that works well with pants. Like, a generalized climax support. It is a healer. Um, it plays well into, like, trying to greed multiple climax combos into a deck, like, more than two. Um, this card would be much better, I think, if it was uh, some sort of cantrip on play rather than the uh, heal. I think it would be better if it were end of attack like Roxy and not on attack. I think mm -hmm. it's such a similar card. Like, same first effect, same trigger. Um, power line's a little different, but, like, it's such a similar card, and I've played so much with the Roxy. And I remember misreading the Roxy when I first got Mushoku in and doing Roxy as on attack for, like, the first couple days and, like, not realize, realizing the card was end of attack. And I was like, damn, this Roxy is actually, like, so fucking whatever. It's so fucking, like, not that great. But then the second the card was end of attack and you got to choose and, like, react to what happened after your attack mm -hmm. step, the card became so much better. Uh, this was, like, just kind of flashing me back to that time where I had to, like, make this decision on attack and I didn't have as much, like, control over what would happen. Um, it's just like, you know, not, it's not the worst, but it's, it's not that great. I think it's a totally playable finisher. It's just not, uh, it's not super premium, unfortunately. But yeah, as, as a healing yeah, finisher. It's probably a B. Yeah. I don't think it's yeah, that bad. Yeah. It heals on play. It burns on attack and has that extra little bonus effect. That's marginally useful. Sometimes I feel like it's, uh. It's fine. It's it is free. Pressure. Unless yeah. you ditch two. It is free. So, lets you run stock light, I guess. Right? So. Alright. Any other thoughts on Aqua? Alright, moving on. Tanner. Alright. 1-0 Aqua. Uh, she's. Experience condition if 
the if your level zone has experience two or higher, it gains five hundred for each other character. During your turn, when the the opponent of this card becomes reversed, if you have another Hall of character, you may bottom deck. It's a six five cross turn that can bottom deck your opponent's cards. Pretty whatever. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. it's it's all right. It's kind of like, kind of sort of like the one Lisa from Bang Dream that resonates with the Yukina. No, that but, card uh, slaps. This card's bad. But no, yeah, the, this yeah. card is it's definitely not as good as that. There was a time where that card was like super crazy. That card was like really good. Uh, but like this card is a a far cry, and it's it's been a long time. <laughs> Don't is think... there anything that would benefit from experience, t like level experience in this that I can't remember anything? No, but you do just want to throw like a blue card in level. So you could level a blue yeah. level three. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess I, I, I guess meta dependent also. Because um, like okay, if you're running the, the trial deck level one combo, right? The Magaro for uh, level one or higher. Um, this could be like a nice auxiliary level one to have with that in certain meta games. Like for example, against uh, reincarnated as a slime uh, with the Shizu that goes to memory. It does be just nice to be able to like bottom deck that Shizu, yeah. in that matchup. And I mean, that's one example. Uh, I don't have any other ones off the top of my head, but. I think like meta game dependent. If there's this a lot card of things, does make slime like a cry. that you want to like yeah. bottom deck. Although slime um, has multiple archetypes now, we're in a post slime volume two world. True. I I was just bringing up like the the point about like yeah yeah. If you just like need an extra level one just to have a level one card to be able to like grab off of your um, I am a uh... Magaro combo. Mm -hmm. Or like run this instead of the uh, the seventy five hundred Subaru that you like instead of the Ramorous target being the Subaru, you could have it be this instead. Because yeah. this gets pretty big, also. Like thousand power less. Run that, yeah. I could see that. All right, you can buy it. Next card. Uh, who's this? Back to me. I think we're back to me. We're back to Andy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, we got this uh, other Aqua. When this gets reversed, if the level of the battle opponent is higher than your opponent's level, you can bottom deck it. It is a um, uh, a Dachi to uh, the bottom of deck. Yep. Pretty yeah. solid. If you know, if you need it. Yeah, bottom of deck's a good you know zone. If in most cases. You need it. There you go. There we go. There's our there's our acronym. Yikini. Sounds like a Hollow Life character. <laughs> Maybe. Um. All right. Next. It's like Lisa Nee. <laughs> Lisa Nee. Poor <laughs> Matt. Nee. Poor Matt. Poor Matt. Uh. Uh. All right. Uh, next, we've got this uh, level zero, five hundred power Aqua. If this is in your front row center slot, gains three K power, sits at thirty five hundred, and on play. No on death. Uh, when this card's sent from stage to waiting room, uh, you can pay one and put a hollow life character from your waiting room to the bottom of your clock. If you do look at up to two cards from the top of your deck, choose up to two hollow life characters from among them, show them to your opponent, put them in your hand, and discard the rest. So it's that Kirito Ricky from Sao Tenth. Except I don't know if that was on death or not. I don't remember. But it is on death, effect. yeah. Same effect, yeah. Um... So this is the final evolution of the uh, the plus two Ricky, where your card is also a plusing zero <laughs> on its own. It's a field plus mm -hmm. that's also that. So like we went from the effect on its own, right, which was just on death, maybe you plus two, to the Salt Lily version, which was I'm a like level zero bomb that always trades with my opponent, and I'm a plus two to. If I open this card and play it in the center lane, it might win board, and then when it dies, we'll plus two. And by the way, this card also might color fix you. This card's really important for um, if you're playing the Azusa 
making sure you have blue level with like yellow or red clock so that you can play your level one combo um as well as like you know plusing you like you would in any normal 1k1 deck you get that extra plusing zero uh i think this card's actually super fucking insane the more i play with this card the more that i think that i think this card may be a design mistake a uh, a go first card that's like also a ricky like a go first card that your opponent can struggle to kill that's also an on death plus yeah is mm. if it's really disgusting in practice i think this card has felt extremely good to play um in terms of like how good it actually is like i can only give you my biases but like every time i've played this card i felt that it's been like a massive overperformer okay well, how many how many copies of this do you play though? Four. Is it, is it too narrow to run like three no. or four copies of? No, no, no. You play <laughs> four, Andy. Because yeah, think about like it. Play, I was, I was say if three, you open yeah, this, if you open this in your opening hand, right, and you're going first, this is your plusing zero. You slam it down in the center. Think about the meta right now, right? Center runners and runners, or clean cuts that only hit three k. Pretty common. Card's pretty fucking nuts right now, actually. You slam it in the center lane, and this card lives, and then it's a Ricky. This card attacks twice, and then Rickies. You're, like, way, way ahead if that happens. So it's like you're going first plus and your Ricky in the same card. Like, really good slot efficiency. Also... In late game, if you're really just like needing to dig for something random in your deck, you can just over like you can just play it, overplay it. And yeah, because it's on death. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it does allow you to grab things that normal rookies don't with the restriction that they have to be in your top two cards. I mean, yeah, the plus is random. The right. plus is random. That's the bad part. However, because this card is also a field plus, I think it doesn't matter because I was also. Right. I was also mm -hmm. saying that about the Assault Lily one, right? Because the Assault Lily one, if people aren't familiar with it, it is a clock bomb. I was saying that that card doesn't matter, that it's a random plus, because you're also always trading with your opponent's card. This is even better than that, because this card will, like, it's pretty likely to, in the current meta to live a turn. Which is, like, insane that your Ricky gets to attack twice. Because Rickies are normally cards where, like, they hit the board, they plus, and then they die. This is a card that does stand a chance of attacking twice. So I, I really don't think that the fact that the plus is random, or the fact that it might reveal a climax or an event and only plus one matters. I think the card's a slam dunk card. I think you play okay. four in most Hollow Live lists. The fact that this card is a common... Uh, you get the fuck out there and you buy, you know... Oh, that's a damn good common. Yeah, it's, in, is, it's insane. It's a common, yeah. I, I would you know, put... You... When I am building Hall Live decks, I would put four cards, like four copies of this in my deck first and then cut as I went along if I had to. If I wasn't going to play it. If you know what I mean. Like, I would put this card in first and then cut afterwards. Right. I don't know, maybe you maybe you split it with like a normal Ricky though, right? So you have the selection and you have there this. is there is Kinda no like normal the best Ricky. Of... Huh? There is no normal Ricky in Hollow Life. I was gonna mention that as well. It, they there don't is have a Ricky. There is no normal on play Ricky in Hollow Life. Really? None. And and there are three hundred cards. Yes, there is no normal Ricky in Hollow Life. I'm this surprised. is this is the best. Block plus in the set, I can guarantee you. Uh, okay, well, okay, for sake of argument, though, what if they had a normal Ricky? If they had a normal Ricky, you probably would not play this, just because there's a large amount of good plusing zeros in this set. But, you could play this as, like, a two of, and you could play, like, six Rickies or something insane, if you mm -hmm. wanted to. I was I, thinking, like, splitting them two and two would be pretty Yeah, nice. you could. I mean... The, but again, I think the strength of this card is it is a good going first card and it's your clock plus in the same card. It's like, like a potential plus two. Oh, I don't know. It's somewhere in the it's somewhere in that area. It's a good card. It's a you good gotta card. you gotta play with it. I I, uh, I implore both you, Andy and Brian, to play with the card because I know Tanner's like played with it and seen it, and he knows how good it can be. Yeah. I. 
I would uh, I would implore both of you after you get Hall Alive or whatever to play with the card and see how you feel because I think it's uh, oh, wow. it's definitely a card that feels insane. Like I, I I don't know if it's actually as insane as it feels it is, but like mm -hmm. the card feels like you field this card against a set that happens to be playing a center runner or like a three K clean cut, and they just like they're just like oh I lose. They just and can't my do anything, my uh... my reward for extending to killing this is that my opponent pluses two maybe, like that that's the worst part right? Is like your opponent extends to kill this card, and then their reward for killing it is that you might plus two, and you push yourself towards level one faster. Yeah, the implications are pretty insane. I mean, if 3500 is the new norm, though, maybe they're not extending that much, though. Maybe. I, mean, I guess it's trading with their plus It depends zero, on the meta, but... yeah. It, it depends on what their, uh, what, what the meta is like right now. The meta right now is like Runners and Kaguya, which can, you know, pump arbitrary power at any level, so it doesn't matter. But, yeah. All right, we can move on. I just wanted to get on my soapbox about the Aqua. Uh, whose card is this? This is you. Oh, it's mine. Oh, she on Brainstorm. This card's sick. Uh, if you have one or less cards in your clock, this card can't stand. But if you're at X0 or X1, this card doesn't stand up. Uh, it has two act abilities. The first one is you rest one of your Hololive characters. Any Hololive character. It can be this or something else. Use a second generation character in your level zone and a second generation character in your waiting room and swap them. Uh, so pretty specific second generation effect. I think this is probably the only one. The best part about this card, though, this is a five-card search brainstorm. They want to rest this. Flip over the top five cards of your library. Uh, put them in the waiting room for each climax card you reveal. Search your deck for a Hall Life character. Reveal it. Put it in your hand. Shuffle your deck. Mm -hmm. uh, so it is a five-card self-tap search brainstorm with this drawback that it cannot stand if you are at X0 or X1. Uh, we already saw the Aqua that can possibly stand this card. You also have a way to play around the downside of this card by just playing four copies of your brainstorm which means that you'll have extra copies in hand if you ever hit this fail case and you have to brainstorm. You can either play it in your other back row slot or overplay it uh, to get that brainstorm since the card effectively, like, minus, it was the same as if it would die. If, if a card doesn't untap, it has the same card economy in White Shores as if it died and is not on the field. So playing over it uh, isn't exactly like, a, like, you know, it's about the same as going I even. guess, but I mean, you're playing over a back row that shouldn't be dying, then. Yes, you can't. Right. Yeah, it, it, is, it is slightly worse than a card dying, but the card economy, if we're just looking at the math, is the same. So if you play four copies and you do hit the fail case, you can just play over it. So with four copies and two aquas in the deck, I can tell you that after... I don't know, Tanner, how many, how many games did we run where I was playing the Mel deck, the, the six-man uh, stack? I was like close to 30. at least... Like yeah. over the, like cl close to thirty ish games, um, I did not hit the fail case one time with this card. I think the fail case is um, if you are aware of it, pretty pretty hard to hit. What do you mean, um, one or less cards in clock? Yeah, I, I yeah. so that that did that was not a factor to this card being like online, uh, at all. Mm. In those I mean, are you games. just getting lucky though? Like that's maybe, but like that's like a one in it's okay, like a okay, two okay. in seven chance. Or, okay, wait, think no. about it. So yeah, it's like a two in seven chance. So if you think about it, right? If you are aware of this card's drawback, right? Simply don't drop your brainstorm and mindlessly brainstorm at level zero for no reason. Which I see people I mean, do. You got to be time, a bit more yeah. conservative with it, but I mean, assuming it's I on think the that field. If, I think that if you are aware of the drawback. And you play in such a way to where, like, you try to not hit the drawback, it will practically not happen almost ever at all. And just like it's, I haven't experienced it, and I've switched out. I've been cutting one of my normal draw brainstormers to play trial deck combos. I cut one extra to put this in just to see how it feels, and it feels so much better than having to worry about the draw. And again, the drawback is negligible, especially if you play the Aqua, which if you're playing any blue, it's easy to splash. Very, very good card. Yeah, you play like one to two of the Aqua. Like the Aqua, again, is already an overperformer already with any Brainstorm. Um, so with like three to four of this and 
one to two of Aqua, like you have a five card brainstorm, five card self rest brainstorm in your deck, and I think that's broken actually. Like, I think having yeah. a five card search brainstorm in your deck is actually just broken. A five card tap self search. Yeah, it's, prob it it's probably worth the risk. It definitely reads really strong. the The drawback is still kind of spooky to me, though. It I is feel spooky. Like that'll, that, yeah, that, that'll that'll have to be something I'll have to try out myself when I get my hands on the cards eventually in six months. I'm a big believer but, uh, in this card. But yeah, if if the uh, the drawback is as uh, as negligible as you guys are saying, if you you play with this card in mind, then five card draw brainstorm is absolutely worth a slot in your deck. I feel like it does possibly gimp your plays. Like, you'll have to think of, like, okay, so, like, say you're in the situation at level zero where you trigger a climax, right? And you'll just be like, oh, I have this stock out, this brainstorm, right? And it'll mill me cards, like, it'll get me to my next deck. That's, like, the right play in a lot of decks, right? You will have to, like, heavily consider playing down the Shion from, like, zero to one, right? Because you have no control over what your clock will be. As opposed to, like, um, using a different stock out, whether it's, like, a drop salvage where, like, your selection might be limited or something like that to pay out that climax. You'll you'll take, like, lines that would be weird for other decks to, like, play around this card. But if you do that, you won't ever hit the fail case. And I think the payoff of having a self-rest five-card selective brainstorm is actually just too good to, like, not try to do that. Uh, the downside of this brainstorm being that it's fucking search, and search brainstorms fucking suck. Um, but a five card Whoa selective now. brainstorm is really good. Search, search, it, it, bra yeah, it's, it's search brainstorms are bad, Andy. Come on, don't don't fucking give me this shit Talk again. I still like the search ones better. They're literally fucking bad. They're literally worse. Salvage is superior in every way. Uh, that's a bold statement there. I I can I'm ready to support it. Would you like to argue? I will no, lock not really. it in I'm not right in the now. Mood. I'm not in the mood. Okay. Not because I'm wrong, but because I'm not in the mood. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's what I thought. But yeah. another counterpoint to this card, maybe, is like something that was mentioned before in the uh, earlier generations was uh, the overall very high quality of brainstorms in Hollow Lives as a set. You have that bustedly broken good one in Gen Zero. You have the uh, Monster... Was it Monstery? The, well, that, the yellow remember, one that rests, rests to give 1,500 power, that Gen, that Gen Zero Monster. one isn't as broken as we thought, remember? We're, well, we're, yeah, we're in it, the future now. Well, yeah, still, contain, still contained in Gen Zero, though. It's very strong in Gen Zero. Yes. Yes. And then there's the, the Universal... I think it was a Monstery. Monster, the yellow yeah. one that Monster. has to give 1,500 power. Like... That's kind of the opportunity cost of running this, right? Like, is it is it worth giving up your Matsuri Brainstorm to run this? If you are in a deck that has the slots to support it, I think it's worth playing. Wait, like, I could see you split it, yeah. them, you know what I mean? Like, maybe run three oh, of the no, Matsuri no, no. and one of this, per se. Well, no, no, no. I think if you play this, you're whole hog on this card. Because I think that if you play this card, you want to just play four and play, like, one or two Aqua to make sure you never experience the fail case. Mm -hmm. So if you but play this Brainstorm, defense. it's because you have the slots available to, like, be like, okay, I can afford to play four Brainstorm and one to two Aqua to, like, yeah. make sure that this card is always online, and then I have a five-card Brainstorm in my deck for quote-unquote no cost because I had the slots to support it. And you think that's better than the Matsuri? In depending or, on your, or you think it like yeah depending yeah. on your deck build depending on your deck build it depends yeah. on your game your deck's game plan yeah there's but also I, another really good brainstorm the, I like the Rushia brainstorm a lot as well which we'll talk about in the next a, video there's a million brainstorms in this but set and it, they're all, it, they're all it pretty is, decent it, they are all based on what you want to do with them but I think this card slaps yeah I'm just gonna give it the A actually I'm gonna lean more on the 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 side that it's broken more than the side that it's bad. I, I'm I'm once again torn. I'm like kind of like between between everyone here. Oh, I mean this this is a contentious card, so don't don't. Yeah, it's kind of yeah. like 
I like I I don't know. It, it's like it's like really like it could go either way for me. I'm not gonna. I, I'm gonna be that guy. I'm I'm not gonna make a choice. I'm gonna just choose them both. It's fine. You're allowed. I've done it before. Yeah. Everyone's done it before. You're good. Mm -hmm. All right, we can move on here. Okay, we have a two one Shion seven K. Um, if the Aqua, the level three Aqua climax combo is in your level zone, this gets. This is a level one in hand, and climax combo. Discard a card from hand. If you have the pants in the climax zone, at the end of this card's attack, you may pay. Oh, so at the end of the attack, you ditch a card, put the Climax Waiting Room, look at the top, up to top four from your library, choose up to four characters among them, show them to your opponent, put it in your hand, and put the rest in your waiting room. This gets 1k power until the end of your next turn. Really similar to the Sumi, except it's not on the standby, mm -hmm. not a pants. Like, really, really similar to the Sumi. Early play I mean, condition, I... actually fine, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, there's a lot of incentives in Gen 2 here to put the Aqua combo specifically uh, in as your first uh, your first card in your level, or if you can't do that, to swap it in with the Xion Brainstorm. <laughs> because everything, everything relies on either, what, like experience level 2 or higher, or this specific card, or... Or blue. Blue. Yeah, yeah. blue experience at level 1. These yeah. are... Wait a second, these combo off different climaxes. Yeah. Yes, they do. Climax. So this is, this is a is different climax. Oh, this is a level yeah. one. This is Wait, pushing yes. right pants, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. This is essentially your Notably, point. sacking the climax here is a real cost because you are sacking a 1k1, which is a continuous effect as opposed to a Doxel right. or a standby. Mm -hmm. Um, so it is objectively worse. The cost well, is objectively worse. I don't know. Sometimes worse. you want to ease off on that gas pedal, you know? When mm. you're trying to, like, they're running low on deck and you maybe you want to like, have you their could. clock go back. Or you don't want to overswing, like, you want to make sure they fucking level up and don't heal down on you again. You could get really tricky with it. Um, yeah. I mean, the, the alternative is, you know, since you can only resolve one of these, since you have to sack the Climax anyway, just use, uh, just attack with this in your last lane. Yes. To resolve the combo there, yeah. <laughs> but if you want to get tricky, you can. You can get tricky. There are options. Yes, you can get tricky. Uh, so it is a 7k. It doesn't need a reverse, notably. Card does doesn't not need, need a reverse. reverse. Oh, it okay, that's sick. End of this card's Wait. attack. Does not need a reverse. Yeah, it sits 8k cross turn after combo. Yeah, you usually need a reverse on these, don't you? Yeah, that, that is Almost that is always, worse yeah. than the Sumi, though. Ooh. I think I think the reward for getting the reverse on the Sumi, which is 3k to another lane, is a little higher. Uh, I think that being on a standby is a little better. Than being on a pants, but uh, this is probably okay. It, it's not the worst thing I've ever read, but I don't know. I'm I'm digging just pl plus four without a reverse. I yeah, check this out too, right? You don't have standby because you're playing hall live, and supposedly standby sucks in this set. So if you had standby with this, you couldn't be as tricky with it because you'd you maybe couldn't. have to stand by over your last like attack or some weird shit. Wait, what? But you can you can be as tricky as you want. I don't understand where you couldn't be tricky if this was standby. What are you What are you trying to do? And pants is a. Well, I guess you want. To, uh, well, actually, the point I was making was incorrect, but it still ended up being correct because <laughs> standby doesn't have soul, so you couldn't get tricky. You couldn't get tricky in the first place if you weren't running <laughs> pants. Well, whatever. I don't. I don't know. I don't know what. I'll give it the Hard, plus because it's cool. Don't need a reverse. Get tricky. She she owns a cutie. I like the climax art. Um, yeah, that's all I got on that one. Mm -hmm. All right, moving on. I think this is back to Andy. Ooh, we got another clock shift. Hopefully, this one's not garbage like the last one. Or is that alarm? It is alarm. No, this is shift. Alarm. No, it's alarm. alarm. No, this is alarm. Okay. They have the same symbol, by the way. Alarm and shift have the same symbol. Wait, are they both the clock? Yes. Really? Yes. They're the same. Oh, okay. Same I'm symbol. Back. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna find them now. Anyway. Yeah, they have the same oh, symbol, you're, you're, yeah. 
You're right, yep. Yeah. Uh, when this is placed from hand to stage, look at the top three cards of your deck. Put them on top in any order. Bounce one of your opponent's characters. And this is on the top of your clock at the start of your main pause. You may pay one and discard a card. If you do, return all the cards in your waiting room to your library and shuffle. This card is a bona fide slapper. I love it. This card's really good. This is king. It, 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 it's bounce. You get a it's have king, perfect but knowledge also... of your attack setup. You get to refresh. This card slaps, slaps, slaps. It's a, it's a bounce that also refreshes. The timing on the refresh is bad. a little bit weird. It's yeah, bad. it's not weird. It's bad. I think. Wait, what that, do you mean okay. bad? I think that you okay, 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 okay. No, no, no. It you refresh at the beginning of your main phase, which is, and you have to clock this card. A lot of the times where you want to free fresh, you might not want to clock yourself, for one. This is better than a normal one of these, where these ones have, like, random fucking costs. This one at least lets you ditch an arbitrary card for the free fresh. So if you mm -hmm. do end up drawing a climax, you can discard it, which other versions of this effect you have not been able to do. So this is slightly better than other versions, and it also has king first effect. This is the king from slime, where you get to set your top three, th three triggers and bounce a character, which is a oh really gosh. good stally effect. Um, so I like it for the fact that it's a king, and I like that the free fresh does have a better cost than normal. But I think I'm with Brian. I, I think it's like a like a B minus. Yeah, it's it's a it's a utility toolbox, but the free fresh is a little bit awkward. The free fresh does play into the Shion Brainstorm, because it is a Surge Brainstorm. I guess, but it you'll already have untapped, right? Or, yeah, like, you'll already have hit your untap. So, it no, won't... Or have, right, or have, or have not just meaning yeah. for the searching itself. Oh, sure. But if you free fresh, you don't want to Brainstorm. You free fresh to put yourself in a better deck state. Not gamble on a new deck state, right? You don't want to Brainstorm into a new deck. You want to sit on it. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. The fact, that's why the beginning of main phase is a bad timing. Because mm -hmm. it doesn't let you do anything else. Uh, I mean, but King's, King's already good enough to play as a, a tech level 3, and then you have a free fresh. Yeah, yeah, it's a fine tech that. level 3. It's a fine tech level 3 as it stands. I think I like this better than King. Uh, King has the soul pump repeatable. Yeah, I think look. I like the free fresh better than that soul pump. Uh, that's just me. That's just me. It depends. It depends. Don't they say think. different strokes for different folks? That's true. They are that different is what ones. They say. <laughs> there are different <laughs> ones. Yeah, yeah, there sure are. Yeah, there sure are. All right, next. Whose card is this? I think this is mine. Uh, okay. Level zero, Shion. When this card is placed on the stage from your hand, reveal the top card of your deck. If it's level one or higher, choose one of your opponent's level one or lower characters, and for the turn, that character gets minus one level. When this card becomes reversed in battle, if this card's battle opponent is level zero or lower, you may bottom deck that character. So it has the possibility of being able to bottom deck bomb level one characters. Uh, the level is zero or lower. So you could hit their standby target with this. You could. It's level zero, not target. cost zero. Right. So you could play three of these, Ooh. level down one of your opponent's level three characters to level zero, and then bottom deck it. If you want to do this, you just play Assault Lily. Well, well, oh, no, wait, no, no. no. English, <laughs> you can't play Assault Lily. I, I like the implications of this against standby decks. Because they're going to, like, these eight standby decks are going to try to throw a big fat 1-1 one -one in your face on turn one, and then you hit them with one of these, and you get that shit out of there. You'd have to get them. It would only work once. Ooh. Well, you you only need it to work. Well, t that exact play would only work once. Yes. Yeah, because they just put the one one in the back row, and then what? Whatever. Okay, then they're putting the one one in the back row, and you save this for later because you can use this throughout the game as well. Like you can level down if you have like more bombs in your deck. Let's say right, if you have a level one bomb to accompany this, you level down one of their level. Oh, it's level one or lower characters, so... 
Oh, never mind. You can't. Hit I guess you can't turn a two into a one or a three into a no, two. No, you into a can't. One. Yeah. But at the very least, you could shrink one of their level ones and get a free side attack later on in the game and not lose your board to a standby deck even in like the mid game at like level one or the mid early game, whatever. All of Sheehan's cards are weird. That's all I have to say. I like it. She's tricky. She's a I guess, yeah, she is a witch. I think, yeah. I think this one's got some potential. Spooky character for I don't know. Monster. I think if you want to level down cards, we can talk about the next card. The, the fucking hey, hey, Iron Man. Hey, hey, hey. What? Corin, no, what? At the very least, <laughs> what? it is, if you make it it is go a top back? check. It's, yes, go back. Get okay, your it, is back a, it, is a free, it is a free top check. At the very least, check. it's a top check. You're right. You're right. It is a top check. You're right. All right. Okay. Love information. If you want to fuck with your opponent's board, you play this card, this fucking Iron Man. This card fucking slaps. This card. If there's a yellow card and a blue card in your level zone, this gets minus one level in your hand. So it's early play. It's a global 15 for every character except itself, which is pretty weird. Um, and then when you play it on hand, you perform the following effect twice. Choose one of your opponent's level one or higher characters. If you do, choose a level X or lower character in your opponent's waiting room. Swap it with the character you chose. Uh, the character uh, is level minus one. Level level down. So you choose the character that levels it. I've been playing this card wrong. I've been letting Wait, my opponent choose. Wait, you, you choose. choose. What, what? You choose what it levels down. Wait, you, you may choose. No, you wait. Your opponent, opponent, your opponent chooses. No, your opponent chooses. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you're playing it's, it right. It's normal level down. The lever. Twice. Oh, the character you chose is the character. Okay. Hotsy translation yeah. weirdness. Okay. Um. So, yeah. It's but, leveled out Carmen, twice. Tell, tell them the thing that you told me last night. Oh, okay, so you perform these actions one after another. Perform the following action twice, which means right. you perform it once, and then you perform it again. So, yeah. the fact that that means that you perform it once, your opponent resolves the effect entirely, and then you move to your next one. So if your opponent, like, puts out a card you don't like after you level down something, if you're only trying to level down one target, and they put down, like, another support at a lower level, you can level that card down. So what's really yeah. cool about that, too, is that if you're playing against something like Seven Deadly Sins, this card actually fucks on Seven Deadly Sins. It's really fucking funny. You level down the Elizabeth, and then the Elizabeth's like Elizabeth. gone, and then you're, all of the cards, all of the Meliodas' lose Hexproof, and then you level down a Meliodas. And then they put out the Elizabeth again, and then you play another IMA, and you level down the Elizabeth. And then you level down <laughs> another Meliodas. <laughs> um, that's, that's rude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This card is disgusting. Everybody has been playing, like, board-based decks at our locals recently because Slime just came out, so everybody's playing 8 standby Slime. This card is, like, the most fucking rudest thing ever. Betty Maru hits the board, and you just go, nope, get it out of here, go away. Um, and the card's just gone. Haha, <laughs> nice try, Zach. If your opponent... If your opponent... <laughs> <laughs> it, it, yeah, if, if your opponent's playing Merge, Brandon's been playing Darkness Merge, it's really funny. Your opponent doesn't even need a Grave for this to work, because you choose it, and then, like, it hits Grave, and then it creates targets for itself, uh, which is really funny. Oh. Um, yeah, so... Um, or actually, no, wait, yeah. Merge. No, no, they need to have the target already. They, they have to have the target in Waiting Room beforehand. It's, it's well, they had a target way. anyway, so it didn't matter. Um, but yeah, yeah. This, this card's hilarious. I love it. Yeah, this card's That's fucking just, great. It's a board as breaker. Far as standby goes too. I would love to play this in a standby deck. Oh yeah, that's the best part it, about it. Standby to work in Hall Alive. You stand by one of these. You, you early play one of these for turn, and then you s climax step play a standby. Get another one of these in your back row. Now you've well, double leveled down your opponent's field and have three K no. of assist. It can't do it off of standby. Has to be. Well, no, you play. Yeah, you no, play no, one no. From your He's hand. saying like as a as a like card that just chills, right? It's a global fifteen, oh. so it's yeah, like a sense, decent. Though. It's a decent like card to just hit. You know what I mean? You you hard play it to your field as like an early right. play, right? And it sits in your back row as an assist, and then your climax step, you play a standby, grab another one of these from your graveyard, put it in your back row as well. Now you have two of these in your back row. You played one from hand to get the level down. You stand by the other. See what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. But you could also just stand by the Miku. Like, we didn't get to that card. Yes, we did. We already covered Gen oh, well. Zero. Yeah, we I <laughs> forget. Which one's the, the Miku? Brainstorm. It's the 2K assist Brainstorm. Oh, that one's really good, too. I don't know. These 
This card's really cool. Double level down? Come on, man. It's an A. Yeah, double you play, you double level down slaps, yeah. Rest in this peace, card's really good. Psycho. How oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, this card, experience. this card also fucks on fucks on mob. Please, Bushi Road announce uh announce yeah. mob set two. Got that season three announcement. All yeah, we need, dude, we need a promo. We need a promo where it's like it's a like card where when it goes to memory, it's like when it's in memory, it gives all your cards with markers hexproof. That's all mob needs, and it needs a card that makes all the traits not matter. That's what so, it needs. <laughs> other... so, so it needs to be a different set. Yeah, it needs to be a different set, yeah. <laughs> how how hard is it to hit yellow, blue, and experience? Not hard at all. Not very, I feel like. Yeah, not very. Um, because of the Aqua Ricky. The Aqua Ricky is your biggest um, fixing tool from 0 into 1. Your Aqua Ricky sets yellow, blue for you, basically, for the rest of the game. And then all you need to do to play this card is clock red. Uh, which, like, is your splash color. So it's, like, fairly easy to do. I haven't had any problems playing this card when I need to uh, so far. I've only played, like, maybe 20-ish games of the deck that runs this card so far, and I haven't had any problems playing it in the matchups where it's been relevant. Um, you do have to play towards it, though, because red is always your tertiary color. Uh, so you have to play towards resolving the card, but in the matchups... The card is strong enough to where you can play towards resolving it, and it does win you the game. Uh, which is really good. Ayame Slaps. Yeah. They're giving great. Ayame all the best cards. Yeah, because she's, she's the cutest. Card slap tip. Alright, next card. Alright. Um, one one Ayame. If you have two or more other characters, this gets 2k power. And it has character on core it is a 75 cross turn you play it wow. standby you play the card is that silica on guard no it's better than silica on guard uh is because silica it always okay silica Sil is if you have two or more other characters it gets 1500 and encore this is oh. always has encore plus 2k yeah but silica's okay. bigger she's 6000 sure this is 75, though. This is just strictly better. This is the best possible standby target you could have. If you're playing 8 standby, you play this card. Otherwise, you never play it at all. If I want to hard play a 1-1 from my hand, who's going to stop me? Standby police? <laughs> yeah. All right. Back to Andy. Mm, okay, we got... It's... Ayame with a stupid look on her face. Uh, during your turn, this gets 1,500 power. Uh, beginning your opponent's attack step, uh, you can mill a card. If it is level 0 or lower, move this to your empty right front row. If that card is level 1 or higher, move this to your empty left, empty left front row. Ooh. So, notably, I was actually playing with this card before the stream. Um... The mill is mandatory. You must mill the top card of your deck if this card is on your field. And okay. you must move it. You and you must move, move it, it yeah. Um, which I think you, actually kills the card. Unironically. You could block it from moving by putting something in your You right could. In you could. Um, however, I think the force mill... And even further than that, the force move actually kills any possible merit this card have might have. If this translation is wrong, it... if the translation is wrong and the mill is optional, we apologize. But like we're gonna evaluate it as written. Force mill and force move, I think, is actually really bad. You're just removing all the control when you have like coronet runner and uh, other runners in the set. I don't think there's a reason to play this one. Especially because, like, I don't know, there's a 4K that we're going to look at. It's literally the next card. It's like a 4K conditionless. So, like... I, I guess with even within this generation, though, as far as, like, a 3,500 card you want to put in your center mm -hmm. to be a plusing level zero, you'd probably rather just play the... The Aqua, the yeah. Top two Ricky. Aqua yeah, it, it directly <laughs> conflicts with the Aqua, which is another problem. 
And the Aqua's always 35. This is only 35 on your turn. Yep. I, I like I like the card, though. That's a really fun effect. Yeah, it is fun. I guess if you really need a red splash, too, you could maybe run it as like a one of for like an opener or something. I don't know. All right, next. Something I'd sleeve up. I'd sleeve it up. I'd play it. All right, we have another Ayame, level 0, 4K. At the beginning of your climax step, your opponent may pay two stock. If they do, this card may not front attack for the turn. 4K. It's a 4K. It's totally fine. Has anyone ever played one of these and had their opponent spend the two stock to stop them from attacking? Nope, not yet. I'm sure it'll happen, though. Stop them from front attacking. Yeah, you can still side. Yeah, just put it in a direct and direct. Line. Yeah. If you put it in a direct line, it doesn't matter. All right, next. Uh, we got this Choco. Uh, on play, you may mill three, optional. And then it is a drop salvage. Uh, and after you drop salvage, you can plus one of your other characters 1k. Uh, this is one of the best red splashes in the set. Uh, optional mill 3 plus a drop salvage is like just a really good combination of effects. Good first deck deck speed, as well as selection. Uh, if you're playing like Xion Brainstorm, right, you're like really hard up for grave access. Uh, so if you choose to play into that package, you definitely play this card. Both either as Red Splash or as grave access. And I don't think you could ask for like a better card. This is like better than the mill 2 drop salvages because like the number one, the mill is optional. And then if you want to do the mill, the mill is more. Because you don't care about getting, like, a, if you hit a climax, like, benefit off the effect. You always play this card just for the free mill. So if the mill is optional and the mill is more, like, it's just a better version of those cards. It's a really good drop salvage. Yeah, dro drop salvage that, uh, that fills your waiting room more than the average drop salvage. I'll take it. Yeah, I think it's, like, a B-plus effect, actually. Really good. Card also comes SSP. Indeed, it does. Next card, Tanner. All right, one zero Choco. If there's a blue card in your level zone, it gets twenty five hundred power and character encore. Speaking of cards that want the uh, the Aqua combo in level at level one, kind of shit. No, it's it's not great, but it is uh, it is pushing for that that package still. This might be an is unplayable it, card, yeah. It is a one hundred sixty five. I'd rather play that Aqua. Yeah, I like the bottom decker better. This is like just worse. Wait, I'm than, a Carmen. This is pretty. Yeah, it's pretty shit. All right, next. Yep, Andy. All right, another Chaco here. Oh, standby. Let's go. Uh, present from the devil in your climax zone to waiting room. Uh, during stand during your climax step, uh, when this place to stage via the standby, you can sack the standby to stand this so stand itself. Um, and then put this into your waiting room when your other character is front attacked. Uh, choose one of your characters and give it thirty five hundred. Why is this weaker than the pig in the slime? Because yeah, this, this is a is... climax combo. This is a 2 2 8k standby target that doesn't have encore. Okay. It's a 30... Let's talk about Geld. Time to talk about Geld. Um, so, Geld is a bad card, actually. Not a lot of Whoa. people realize this. Geld sucks, actually. Geld is a bad card that is turned into. A powerful effect by your level one climax combo because if you play two to three of your level one climax combo you are plus two to three on stock so being able to win a lane which is a plus one and then pay three to save your geld means that you plus one with your standby right because you played your standby in a way so that your standby was a plus one or you put your two two on board and then you've saved your lane which means you've plus two'd for the cost of three stock over your combo. That's why Geld is good, right? Because you can pay three for it and you have a stock charging level one. 
it's your quote unquote way to, if you think about it, geld with the Rimuru level one is a way to turn your stock into a plus, right? It's just a roundabout way of getting there. Does that make sense? Yeah, I'm I guess explaining I'm, it. I yeah. didn't think about on. I yeah. didn't think about encoring the geld. Yeah, Very it's snaky. like encoring the geld is the way that the geld becomes good, and you can only afford to encore the geld because you have your stock charge. So the stock charge, again, we always talk about this. A stock charging combo is only good when you have a way to turn that stock into a card, and that's a roundabout way of turning your geld into a card, right? The like the pay three, right? You like spend two of your stock to like plus two, basically, off your geld. Um, this card doesn't have any of that, so it's ass. This card's actually unplayable garbage. Well, it's actually, hold really fucking hold, bad. Hold the yeah, fuck I, up, I, all right? Hold I, the fuck I don't, up. I don't want this card. I don't right? think it's it, it's it's a free. It's it stands for free. It does. This is like Cocutus. In it doesn't do anything. The... Cocutus gives in you fucking... stock. Yeah. Cocutus well, gives you, you stock. This card doesn't oh my God, do anything. I was, I was stuttering and you didn't let me finish. It's so rude. Yeah, I took advantage of you. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's Go fucking ahead. mean, dude. I'm sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, um, I'm, up, I'm sorry. <laughs> um. All right, the train's back. Um. Yeah. <laughs> You have to go through all this bullshit to get this stupid uh, Eins and Cocutus combo off. Where this is just, like, free. You just sack it and go to town. What? Yeah. But, there's but, the, but this, no this thing sits at 8k and has no on and this card, anything else. It also doesn't do anything. Standing your standby card doesn't do shit unless the card you stand by did, did something. And this can this only like, this stand itself. This is such a itself. weird card. I feel like this wants to sit in the back row. Like, this is a target yeah, wants to sucks. stand out of the back row. That's but why then it's it bad. Effect makes it it's be actually an row. F. You're no. right. You're right, Andy. It is an F. I'm, it still stands itself. Like, if you have multiple Who copies cares? or multiple standbys. It doesn't standbys, do anything. I, no. It doesn't it's do anything, so it's thing. bad. Standing, it's, the no. card does nothing. You don't play standby because there's no reason to. And this is hypothetically one of the reasons to, and it does nothing. Right. If, if, this if, you're play, something... if you're playing this card, what are you trying to 3,500 field backup? You just play it to the front row and you just back it up the old fashioned way with a backup. It's an 8K. It's an 8K. You can stand yeah. by 10 Oh fives. my god, you know what's yeah, bigger yes, than a level yes, that's, 1? That's the point. You know what's bigger than a level 1? 8K. What do level 1s get to you? Oh you my god, no. No, they're no. literally not these days. It, no. Level 1s literally, they're costless 8Ks. Now the uh there there's the I don't remember the name. It's the one zero uh blue slime card that with the swords in memory gets one K. It's a one zero eight K cross. Hey, you need to have four of that fucking trash sword it, in your memory. It happens so quickly in every single game. <laughs> that 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 is guaranteed by level two to be okay have four of those this card is ass dude. nine times out of ten please, this card please, literally is worthless please don't try to tell me this card's good andy please please <laughs> i'm not gonna say it's good i'm not giving it an f i'm not giving it an f it's not that bad it's, i i can it's, buy it's not that for. bad i can buy it's not that bad but i can't say it's good if you're playing eight standby with it do would you I feel like you would maybe still play this just the to best, like, get the attack with it. Maybe the, sometimes the I don't best know. part about I, this card is this, backup in a this fucking climax art. Like I'm Jesus giving it Christ! The plus for the climax. Look at just this do shit. That, that make that's better. Holy than Holy shit! This card can do. It's a that's some devil good Santa. climax art. Present Hell yeah! Devil Santa. All right, <laughs> next card. Can we move on? Are we good? Okay. Um. Who is this? Is who me? is this? I think it's you. It's you Go man. ahead. Yeah. All right, level zero Chaco. Uh, when you trigger a climax uh, during your trigger check, you may discard a climax from your hand. If you do, look at the top two cards of your deck, choose one of them, add it to your hand, and discard the other. Uh, experience rest this if the sum of the levels in your level zone is two or higher. Choose one of your hollow life characters. It gets two K power for the turn. I like this card. This is pretty solid. Yeah, this card slaps. It, uh, it's a climax filter, yeah. You're playing eight pants. You're playing like any like cloggy climaxes. It's got the assist effect, and then the experience goes right into playing Azusa because you got to have blue in your level, and there's good blue level threes. The good filter effect. It's a good repeatable act. It kicks your axe for your gen 
Those are Gen 1s, right? It kicks your act for your Gen 1s. It's yep. a lot of power for that free act, and it's a filter effect. It's like your quintessential other back row. I think the card's really good. I'm with Tanner. It only goes in those decks, which is why it isn't like a slam dunk A, but it is good. Any other thoughts on the card? Or are we good? Let me go on to Subaru. Uh, I, I, I think the card's ahead. good. Go ahead. All right. Uh, is this me? Right? Subaru? On play, yep. heal. On attack, uh, if you have a yellow, a red, and a blue card in your level zone, you can pay two. If you do, or you reveal the top card of your deck, if it's a hollow life character or an event, burn two. Damage cancel may occur. Put the revealed card back. Um, That's solid. Off finisher. This card is an okay off finisher, yeah. Uh, it this card, I, I'm currently playing this card in the Rushia decks because I'm also playing red in my Rushia decks. So, like, you can summon this card with Rushia and then burn. Which is pretty I feel cool. Like this, uh, I feel like this fills the same spot as the uh, the Gibral. Yeah, yes. The, the, cho the Chaka Gibral mm -hmm. we looked at. Yeah, if if you are in a deck that is yellow, red, or yellow, blue, red, or blue, yellow, red, rather, and how you would level, you would play this card. Well, I don't. I don't think that's like the end all, be all of it. I, I think it's. I, I think it's what your end game combo is looking to do, right? If you're going to have a lot of hand floating, you go for the uh, Chaco, because you have the hand to discard. If you're going to have extra stock, you go for this card. Well, you do have to fulfill this experience requirement. Well, well I mean, yeah, but assuming that you could play either or. If you could play either, okay, yeah, I see what you're saying. Because they both heal and they both have a burn effect. I'm picking yeah. it up. I see. The I'm putting line. it down. Nice. What I? <laughs> what, what did I give the other one? I'm I don't give know. It it's like a, it's like a B. It's like a, a B, totally yeah. playable off finisher. Yeah. Mm -hmm. a, a minus for the. I'll give it a minus because it's like more restrictive, right? You gotta wait, Andy's gotta find the other card still so he can know. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just gonna assume it was a B and just give it that. I can't find it. <laughs> Alright. Next. Alright. All one zero Shuba. Um, experience is if you have blue in your level, you may ditch one. If you do, look at the top four cards of your library, choose up to one level one or higher among them. Reveal it to your opponent, add it to hand, put the rest to waiting room. There it is. Big. On play, all this is broken. Yeah. This card just can carry a deck on its own, despite having this stupid experience condition, despite having the level one or higher restriction, it actually doesn't matter this profile is actually so disgustingly broken that it doesn't matter how hard you try to lock it. It doesn't matter how hard you try to restrict it. It is worth stretching to play it, and when it is in your deck, it instantly makes your deck a tier better than it was previously. Ozzisa is a broken effect. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Is it worthy of the S? Just a... Probably yeah, not. Probably not. It's probably like just... an A plus and an S. I I, I don't know. I mean, that was a good TED talk. I mean, very, it, very solid A. It, it, yeah, it was it, it's probably it to the point. It's probably an A plus. I don't know if we can just slap an S on an Azusa. <laughs> like in terms of like how you will build Hollow Live, you will you will like basically go into every deck saying, "Can I build to play Azusa?" And if the answer is no, you will heavily consider trying to do what you are doing to play Azusa. Because Azusa is that strong. Does that make sense? Like, like if you go into a deck build and your colors or cards you want to play don't support Azusa, you will heavily consider playing that those like suite of cards. Because you can't play Azusa. You would like try to play Azusa as hard as you could. Maybe 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 it is, maybe it is the S then. Maybe maybe it is the S. Maybe. Maybe. 
I mean, it's it's in at least seventy percent of all Hall Live decks minimum. It's it's super that I've bad, seen. Yeah. It's just broken. It's just the best card profile ever printed in white shorts. You literally can't get better than on play Oz song. It does everything you want to do in a card. It filters. It mills. It like gives you hand filter. Like, <laughs> like what it, else it do you it want? All. Yeah, it filters, literally it does mills, everything. It filters does everything. Yeah, I did say filter twice. You got me. I've it been, does I've been, I've been snarful guard. Carmen, what if it hits four climaxes? Then you, <laughs> then you, then you should have fucked. Absolutely fucked, idiot. All right, next. Just play the second one you have in your hand. Whose card is this? Andy. Uh, uh, is it? Uh, okay. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, scared Subaru here. Um, when this, you play it, uh, you can uh, rest another one of your standing characters. I'm seeing a theme here. Uh, if you do choose a card in your level zone and a card in your waiting room and swap them and choose one of your characters, give it 500 power. Uh, and you can put this in your waiting room when your other character's frontal attack. You can sack it, uh, give a thousand power. I don't really like it. I think this card kind of sucks ass. I think, um, yeah, in a pinch, you could get your colors right in your level to do your uh, other effects, but I'd rather just uh, level the uh, correct color in the first place. Yeah, I mean, and if you're playing heavily into the Gen 2 stuff, the, uh, the Xion Brainstormer just fixes your colors for you anyway. I want to hear Carmen's point of view on this, though, because I remember when we were talking about a uh, rag, Ronald Girlfriend. Oh, a level uh, swap? There's that card that, like, level swaps, and we were, like, talking, like, oh, well, why don't you just level the right card in the first place? Well... And like, oh, no, sometimes you... Or, no, 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 it was Mushoku Tensei, where it's like, okay, you run that level swap just in case, because you're running a double-colored level one. Right? Yeah, yeah I, yeah, I I remember that. Yeah, and I hated so, the card, and you liked it. So, what do you think about this one? The difference in this set is that you have the Aqua Ricky. The Aqua Ricky is actually enough, like, uh, level fixing, enough to, blue to not to not worry about ever like whiffing your condition. Well, are you trying to hit two conditions at the same time, though? Because the Aqua is a level 0, and don't you want to hit blue in level and level 2 in level? Or no, the Aqua that you confused? level is level 3. And then the oh, Aqua I thought we were talking, he said the Ricky. Right, the Ricky doesn't go send itself, it sends anything from your waiting room. Is it? It's it's clock clock card from Yeah. You, you, you choose yeah. your clock with that? You choose the card that goes into your clock. Uh, okay. With uh, the Aqua Ricky, the Aqua Ricky is enough fixing. So it so it it sets your colors on its own. Yeah, God. so you don't have to worry about having to run a level swapper. Rental girlfriend unfortunately doesn't have that. It does have the card that helps you put the Sumi into your clock, the um the Ruka Chaser. That card just lets you mulligan more aggressively because in that deck you're like actually trying to put together a level one combo as well as trying to put together your experience requirement by level 1. You have to put together so much stuff so quickly that uh, you need to include extra fail saves. The, the downside to this one is that like you're not truly gimped uh, if you do whiff. Uh, you can still continue to play. You can still play your level 1 combo. You can still continue to play the game as normal. You just can't start playing your Azusa until level 2. Is that bad? Sure. Is it the like, absolute total game loss that it is in Rental Girlfriend? No. But I don't think you need this card, and I think this card is bad. F. Another TED Talk completed. So, F's a little harsh, but I still hate yeah, it. I, I, don't know, I don't know about an F, but I don't like yeah. it either, yeah. I'm dabbing at my desk. <laughs> Next card. Yeah. Face cams went on site review, so they can watch us uh, watch us dab. All right, who has this one? Is this me, or is no? Is it Brian? Yeah, Brian. Brian. Yeah, Brian so. takes it out. Yeah, there we go. Two, two one Subaru counter. Uh, when you use this card's backup, you may discard a climax. If you do, choose one of your Hollow Live characters, and that character gains thirty five hundred power. 
splittable six K. Yo, six K backup or uh, doesn't have to choose a character in battle. So backup for twenty five. That is a give an, big backup. Five hundred cards, kind of sick. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of power. I like that. Especially if you're in uh, in a deck with a lot of pants or uh, or pants or bar. You yeah. constantly have a lot of extra climaxes in hand. I feel like this, uh, if you've got something to protect, this backup is pretty all right. Ooh, imagine if you could salvage Grief Seed whenever you want. What? Oh, baby. What the fuck? Grief Seed. Um, card's probably fine. I, I, I like it. I do think yeah, it like, competes like with, it like... It really makes them think twice, mm. like, all right, Nijigasaki, you're pretty big, but... Then you beat six, yeah. It's Big a lot of power. <laughs> it is a lot I of power. This. I love this. It is a hand filter too. Like for your opponent on their toe. Like maybe split this with another level two counter of some kind, like a free yeah, you or like an you just change and you just like yeah, you just have, have one. Pocket. You just have one in your deck, and your opponent asks if it's in your grave, and you say no. They're like <laughs> playing around six k mm. power. Run this in a deck with pants or bar or something. Yeah. Ooh. It is spicy. Shuba, shuba. It's a lot of power. All right, that's it for Generation Two. Wow, we did it. We got there. We will see you guys in Gamers.